high and mighty sovereign, Elizabeth, by the grace of God, Queen of England. has sailed from France for Scotland. What are we to do? Did Your Majesty grant her England safe conduct at sea? No! She defied my ambassador, defied me, refused to acknowledge that I am the rightful Queen of England. It is true, my lord. Now she shows her true colors. Suppose she lands, what then? Her presence in Scotland will endanger Your Majesty's throne naturally. But she is the legitimate heir of Henry VII, and her claims to succeed Your Majesty must be acknowledged. Not by me. Never. I should fail in my duty to Your Majesty if I did not state facts. We must face the fact that in the eyes of Europe, you are a pretender to the throne of England. Because the marriage of your father, Henry VIII, to your mother, Anne Boleyn, is deemed invalid. They call me illegitimate. Go on. That being faced, Mary Stuart must not be allowed to land in Scotland. She will use that throne as a stepping stone to yours. She must be seized at sea. By English ships, Your Majesty. But that would offend France, offend all Europe. Have I no captain who can raise a black flag on occasion? They do it often enough when I forbid it. What happened, Randolph? Hawkins! Great! What did you say? Oh, Heavenly Father, I give thee thanks for the security of this voyage, which hath brought us safely to my native land. Counsel my heart, guide my steps in this land of my birth, that I may rule with piety and wisdom. Lord. Yes? 
Your sister Mary, Queen of Scots. She's on her way to Edinburgh. You're daft, man. But I've seen her, my lord. She landed at Leith. She'll be here most any moment. <laughs> Your regent is over, Moray. You'll step down now. Aye. <laughs> no longer you'll rule Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> my lord, we'd uh, better go down and meet her. No. You'll wait here. You've gathered here to welcome her. Understand? And another thing. Remember, you lords are the real power of Scotland. You can afford to hold your tongues. I warn you, leave all speech to Levington. Especially you, Ruthven and Morton. <laughs> You, my dear sister, welcome home. Welcome to Scotland, Mary. <laughs> Thank you, James. Frankly, I was worried. Thank heaven you crossed the sea safely. Oh, none too safely, James. We were pursued, nearly taken. They did capture the ship that carried our horses. That's why I had to come here on that ridiculous horse. A fine way to travel for a triumphant homecoming. Pursued at sea? By freebooters. <laughs> a freebooter. With a skirt, I dare say. The Lords of Scotland are waiting to greet you. Uh, they're, they're in the Great Hall. Will you, will you see them now? Oh, I'm afraid, and I did so want to look my best after all these years. <laughs> Remember the old days at Inch Mahone, James? I was a spoiled little girl, and you seemed such a man. You'll never know how I admired and looked up to you in those days. <laughs> you haven't changed at all, James. I wish to thank you for the welcome you have given me, my lords. I have been 13 years away. It was not of my own choice that I went away, but it is of my own choice that I have returned. You will find me young, perhaps inexperienced, but with the support of all of you, and with the Earl of Moray at my side, I shall rule fairly and justly. Thank your gracious majesty. The name of Stuart, of your father, is loved and honored in Scotland. One moment, Livington. Can't we welcome her majesty without the presence of foreigners? No, David. Rizzio is my secretary. He will remain. Continue, Lethington. No affront is intended, Your Majesty. I understand. On behalf of these lords and nobles of your kingdom, 
I wish to assure you of our unwavering loyalty. Differences we may have, aye, but they shall not divide us. Differences? What differences? Oh, nothing that cannot be resolved, Your Majesty. What differences, my lord? Ludington meant nothing of any importance, my dear sister. Exactly what did he mean, James? He was mindful of your religion. You call that nothing of importance? It's your religion too, James. Please try to understand. Conditions are changing. The old faith is passing. This is John Knox's day in Scotland. And you've gone over to his side? I've only followed my conscience. I hope you have one, James. I had your own interest at stake. I was regent. It was my duty to protect your throne. By attacking what I hold most dear? By making friends with Knox. Do you realize the power he holds over the people? If you want the people behind you, do as more is done. Aye, there's Elizabeth. Where is Elizabeth? Born in the old faith like yourself, my lady. But she gets off a ship when it sinks. I don't like your tone, Ruthven. My religion is no garment to be put on and off with the weather. You would better know that, all of you. I shall worship as I please and hope for all men to worship as they please in Scotland. Good for you, lassie. You're from the north, Huntley. Are you a turncoat? No, no. And I'll defend to the death your right to worship as you wish. Thank you, Huntley. And now let that be an end of this unimportant matter. Is there anything else on your minds, my lords? We're here to speak about your marriage. Ruffin! Aye! Aye. 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 Go on, Lithington! We have hesitated to mention this, Your Majesty. But now you have returned. Why mince words, Lethington? The King of France died when I was 18. Naturally, I'm free to marry again, if I choose to. We realize the matter is delicate, Your Majesty. I'm glad you realize that. But the matter is of the gravest importance. These are troubled times. If you made a foreign alliance, what would happen here? Until you are safely married to a loyal Scot whom we can trust, Scotland will be unsettled. All we wish is to see you safe on your throne. It's quite true, my dear sister. Until men know what alliance you will make, the clans will sleep with their swords in their hands. I suppose you've decided on my husband? Aye. One of you? No. No. No, no, no. We wouldn't stand for that. We've considered only your welfare in choosing him. Choosing whom? Lord Darnley. He is a steward, next heir after yourself to the throne of England. You yourself said that you would never give up your claim to the succession. Marry Darnley and strengthen it. Of course, uh, I can't give myself out to be a virgin queen, like our cousin Elizabeth. But suppose I don't choose to marry at all. Then you'll do as you please. And I'm behind you, lassie. Thank you, Huntley. I see I have one friend here. Where is the Earl of Bothwell? Is he here? <laughs> Why do you laugh, Morton? <laughs> No offense to your majesty. It concerns the Earl of Bothwell? Something he said about your majesty. Yes. And what did he say? Bothwell said you and Elizabeth roll together wouldn't make an honest woman. And do my lords allow my name to be slandered? Aye, your majesty, you're mistaken. There's no love lost between us and Bothwell. Take no account of such speech, Your Majesty. I shall take account of it. I shall take account of all the veiled insults which have been flung at me here tonight under the guise of welcome. But lassie. I realize now what kind of support I may expect from all of you, even from my own half-brother. My dear sister. I know where please. you stand now. I know where I stand. Go ahead, form your council. Do as you wish. I'll have no hand in it. Up until now, I have never done anything of my own wish. The ambition of other men carried me to France when I was a child. 
The ambition of other men married me to a dying boy who became king of France. I wasn't asked. But I'm through. I'm going to live my own life, do as I say. I refuse to marry. I love no one and I shall marry no one. I'm going to begin to be myself. Mary Stewart. She sits on that throne only so long as we maintain her there. Softly, softly. Why then, do you curry favor with her? She'll find out we'll stand for on the sofa chair. Right. And she'll sit on the throne only as long as we keep her there. Not her. She's our queen. And she'll remain our queen. I'll back you in that, honey. I'll go with you, Hutley. Softly, softly. There'll be no throne. No Scotland if we fall out. Who's going to keep her in hand? I will. She'll accept the counsel I propose. Have you already picked yourself to be Prime Minister, Moray? Aye. And with Ludington, the Secretary of State, what have you to fear? I'll serve her faithfully, Moray, I promise you that. Aye, as long as it serves your own purposes. But who's to look after the rest of us? Aye, aye, aye. aye. I will. I promise you. Madame. Aye, 
and the flames that consumed my teacher bit deep into this heart. Did Mary Stuart come to Scotia whilst she sat on the golden throne of France? No, no. She was lost in luxury and the sinful joys of the flesh. And now, now, when fate has cast her down from that throne of sin, she remembers another gem in her crown, the gem she was born with, Scotland. The time has come for all men to choose between the Kirk of Scotland and this Jezebel of France. Master Knox. Sir, we Scots know who fought for the mother. Aye, and we Scots remember who fought against her. Mock me as you will. You can never silence me, Tom. I'm no such fool, Master Knox. You can't silence 10,000 trumpets. But I can match you with a better tune. And from a better bag of wind. I shall say what I have come to say. And neither rank nor station shall avail mine enemies. Well, my people, have we not had enough of the Guises and their followers? Aye, let them stick to their warmer climates. And may they come to a hotter place before ever they set up another standard here. Oh, back, back, I say. Stop! Stop, I say! Stop! Or I shall bring you down to the end of the Your Majesty, may I rent your presence of this old goat? I wish to speak to this gentleman. Won't you come inside, Master Knox? Is there anything to fear? Look at me, Master Knox. Can you believe in your heart that I'm as wicked as you say? Do you not bring back the old faith that we have cast out of Scotland as the work of Satan? Is it a crime to be steadfast in the faith of our fathers? There is only one true faith, and that I preach. Preach your faith, Master Knox. Preach it. Let me practice mine. Can I forget whose daughter... It is true I'm the daughter of Mary of Guise. It is true I keep my mother's religion. Still, I'll respect your own and will give you as much freedom as I'll demand for myself. Aye, they told me you spoke fairly. Can't you also? Can't you be tolerant? I want to be loved by my people. I need their support. Your support, your friendship. You heard my words out there in the courtyard? I heard words that another sovereign would call treason. Words that another sovereign would punish as my mother punished treason. I called you Jezebel of France out there, and I'll call it you again. I believe in your sincerity, Master Knox. I only ask you to believe in mine. Can't we be friends? I have said what I came to say. But you no longer mean it. You... Well, blast his insolence. Well, Rammy ought to be hung. It will take more than love to rule this land. I am... Ask your opinion. Good. Good, you've got a temper. Well, don't curb it, Your Majesty. Make force your crown and fear yourself. Are you the captain of the guard? Oh, no, no. I only arrived in Edinburgh tonight. Then you'll do me the favor to leave again and not return until you've learned to hold it. I'm afraid that will be never, Your Majesty. I see I've arrived too late. Molly has already told you about me. About you? You pride yourself. Aye. It's a way I have, Mary Stewart. Um, who are you? You heard my pipers. You don't remember my clan? Which clan? 
When you hear those pipes, you'll know the Botwins are about. So you are the Earl of Botwin. At your majesty's service. And did you say that Elizabeth Tudor and I rolled together wouldn't make an honest woman? Oh, no, not at all. What I really said was that the two of you together wouldn't make a proper woman. But that was years ago when I saw you in France. Just a skinny little girl. I wouldn't say it now. You're a very outspoken man, my Lord Botwell. That's one privilege I've always retained. Oh, come now, you don't want flattery. I've confessed, forgive me. Well, you did fight in defense of my mother. I thank you for that. Don't thank me. It was a pleasure. I have found many enemies here. Have I also found a friend? You'll only find out who's your friend in Scotland by putting him to the test. Tonight I need loyal backing more than my mother did. So I imagine. And here in Moray and the Lords were here to uh, welcome you, I, I rode over from the border. To stand with them against me? Gosh! Where are they? They are forming my council in the hall. Her Majesty's Council. You, Molly, as Prime Minister, I fancy. Naturally. You, Morton, as uh, Secretary of State. Ah. Or is it Ruthven? No, Lethington. Ah, uh, Lethington. Oh, indeed. Who's to be the Queen's Lieutenant General? That's for me. Well, oh, oh, you're, you're all wrong, oh, gentlemen. I've decided to take charge of Her Majesty's Armed Forces myself. We'll not allow it, Buffalo. You're too late. I've just accepted the appointment. From whom? From Her Majesty, the Queen. <laughs> Didn't you say that my Lord Randolph was expected to return from Scotland this morning? I did, Your Majesty. I wonder what's keeping him. Some pretty face, I dare say. Are you growing jealous of Randolph Lester? Is it any fault of mine, Your Majesty? More and more now you're giving your important commissions to Lord Randolph. There was a time when I basked. Don't the say bask. Reminds me of a fish. Your Majesty, you know my feelings. You must realize how they're torn when when you were virtual gaze. Your Majesty, I beg you on my knees. My Lord Randolph, ambassador to Scotland. convey my friendly greetings to Mary Stuart? And tell her how I rejoice at her safe return from France? Most ardently, Your Majesty. Ardently? Hmm. I begin to understand your dallying. I've heard of her enchantment. Tell me, is she as pretty as they say? You may see for yourself. She sent you this token of her love.
girl. Not a queen. Tell me. What's she like? Most charming, Your Majesty. Already she has many suitors. Chief among them is Lord Darnley. Darnley? Another thorn in my crown. A weakling. A drunkard. He stands next to my throne. After her. I'd be in double jeopardy if she married him. In my opinion, Your Majesty, the Earl of Bothwell removes that danger. He leads her troops like a hurricane. Why, he's restored more order in a month in the north than it's known for ten years. He's a mainstay now, and it's plain to see he's in love with her. Do you think I could sleep with Bothwell on the throne beside her? But, Your Majesty, she's a creature of love. Believe me, your fears are unfounded. She wins men to her side in gentle ways. Aye. And I see she has won our Randolph, among others. You shall go north no more. Your Majesty! Stop, Morton! You're a cold fish. You shall be my ambassador to Scotland. But, Your Majesty, I'm simply giving you my report. Leave us! I've... Leave us! And take care. Or your heart will fall off your sleeve. On Bothwell. Am I never to have peace? She must be defeated. How? Declare war, unite Scotland with England. War. Is that all you men know? Unite Scotland against England, you mean. Unite Scotland under Mary Stuart. But how else is she to be defeated? Do you know what it is to be born illegitimate? You have royal blood in your veins. And that one word standing between you and a throne, how it makes ambition burn. Who was it ruled Scotland before she returned? Who wants to rule again? The Earl of Moray. You shall ride north tonight as my ambassador, Throckmorton, and get in touch with Moray. So, Lord Bothwell has put down the rebellion on the border. Has he uh, returned yet? Not yet, madame. Why that tone? I no longer have your confidence. That's not true. You know you must secure your throne by marrying, yet every time I mention you it... You don't like Bothwell, do you? He has been a good lieutenant general. But his religion rules him out. He is not a religion. All he believes in is this. I should be thankful for that. It's done more for me than your music and your continual talk about marriage. I'm sorry, David. I try only to serve you faithfully. <laughs> yes. You're as fanatical in your way as John Knox is in his. I often wonder which you love the most, myself or my religion. I would never betray either. You imply that I would. You are the sole defender of our faith and these islands. What becomes of that if you marry heretic? Meaning Bothwell? Even Lord Darnley is oh. 100 times a better choice. At least he's of the faith. Why must I marry at all? To have an heir. To be true to your blood. To escape the tyranny of these lords who laugh in your face. You're a worse tyrant in your loyalty than they are in their disloyalty, David. I have never urged your majesty to marry a Scot. Marry in Europe, where your destiny is. My destiny is here, in Scotland. Whom would you have me marry, David? Tell me. Look at these marriage proposals. First and foremost, Don Carlos of Spain. Onions. <laughs> the Archduke of Austria is not so good a match, but he is eager to marry. No, no, beer, not with <laughs> the King of Sweden. Is <laughs> Don't forget the King of Denmark. Forget him impossible, but would Scotland ever be quiet by marriage? I assure you, he's a very peaceable man. But they say he snores. <laughs> the Duke of Anjou. The Prince de Conde. 
Scotland grows on the highest bough. Oh, Lord. I've been waiting all day. Am I never to see Her Majesty? You'll see her when she wants to see you, my lord. Ah, the four protecting angels. Oh, hello, Donnelly. Still hanging around, eh? Where's Her Majesty? In her study with the English ambassador. And strict orders not to be disturbed. You shake your finger at me, Snubnose. I'll spank you where you belong. I'm left out in the cold, too, Bothwell. And these lashes have no time for plain Scotsmen. But how long am I to be kept waiting? Oh, listen to the man. You think he owned the place? If I did, there'd be no Lord Throckmorton around, I can tell you that. Oh, I forgot, Darnley. He's a friend of yours. I hear he's promised to back your claim to England if you take yourself out of Scotland. Jealous, Bothwell? On the contrary. I think it's a first-rate idea. I shall wait for Her Majesty below. Don't go on my account. I'm not going on your account, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you laugh at me, too, behind my back. Oh, no, it's not safe to laugh at barbarian. For two fathers, I put you over my knee. Oh, Lord. Go tell Her Majesty I want to see you. You do with a man like that, he won't take no for an answer. <laughs> Someday you'll meet a man who won't take no for an answer. And? And I'll be the godfather. <laughs> now will you tell the queen? No, I won't. Then here I stay. For one hour, Lord Throckmorton, you've been talking in circles. I still don't know what it is Elizabeth wants. Do I fail to speak fluently? Too fluently. You conceal your purpose. Your Majesty. You tell me again and again of Elizabeth's friendship. 
I too give her my friendship. We're two rulers in two adjoining countries. We're related by blood ties. There's every reason for friendship based on understanding. But how can there be understanding without frankness? Be frank. What is it Elizabeth wants? Very well. Marry the man she chooses, and she will recognize you as the next heir to the throne of England. My succession was ordained by circumstances out of her control. I don't need her acknowledgement. My mistress only meant that if you married a man of her choosing, it would indicate no threat to her throne. She has someone in mind, I suppose. She... She did mention a name, Your Majesty. Who? The Earl of Leicester. She named him. She had the temerity to name the Earl of Leicester? No one stands higher in her esteem than Leicester. Why, she's shown that she's fronted him before all England. Her favorite, her leavings? And now she wants to cast him off on me, make me a laughing stock before the world? Please, Your Majesty. You told me what is in her mind. Let me tell you the rest. My cousin Elizabeth has never taken a single step that wasn't political. She's afraid I will marry the one man who embodies everything she fears. The man who is next heir after me to her throne, Lord Darnley. That is sheer imagination. It is not in my nature to play politics, but now I shall. There is no other course I can follow and keep faith with my faith and with the name I bear. Now I know what I shall do. Your Majesty, I beg of you not to be rash. Leave me. Go back to Elizabeth. Tell her what I have said. Have you seen Lord Darnley? Why? Her Majesty wishes to see him privately. A room's a room and a door's a door. I've been waiting to see you for hours. Are you a man or a storm not to be brought indoors? When my girl won't see me, then I'm a storm. Your girl, is that the way you speak of me outside? You expect me to bow and scrape and make pretty speeches? I'm a soldier. I love you. You want to take everything, my storm. You know any better way? You forget I'm your queen. Have I ever forgotten that? But I remember you're a woman. Don't forget that yourself. I won't be talked to that way. Oh, yes, you will. You're going to listen to me for once. You know I love you. You've known it from the first moment I met you. I command you to leave me. What's come over you, Mary? What's happened? But you're frightened. You say you're a queen. Be one. What else am I trying to do? Leave me, please. Well, you go about the business of Mary and someone else. Yes. Now, I'm in no mood for joking. I'm going to marry Lord Darnley. You're what? Marry Lord Darnley. You're out of your mind. Let me go. No, no, you can't do it. Let me go. I'll never let you go. No. I love you. No right. I have a right. Let's not pretend no. you don't care. I know days when you no, did, no, when you no. told me so. No. I, with your eyes, no. with everything you did and said. No. You can't lie to me. I made up my mind I'm going to marry Darnley. But Darnley, why didn't you pick a man? Tell me that you love him, Mary, and I'll let you go. I, you can't do it. I can. I do. Will you learn this isn't your kingdom but mine? Yours for how long? You think I can't rule without you? Try it. You can't leave Scotland. You've seen the last of me, Mary. I won't give you leave. I don't need your leave, nor leave taken. I'm just going.
Lord Darnley. You have asked my hand in marriage. I have decided to grant it. Your Majesty! Oh, I've hardly hoped. I haven't dared. Oh, I love you, keep you, defend you. We shall face troubled times. This is some dream, a jest. It can't be true. And yet, it is true. I never dreamed I'm to hold you in my arms. They say a kiss seals the bargain. James, they're waiting for you to say it. The fact is, my dear sister, we're troubled by your apparent lack of confidence in this council. Apparent? Why not say obvious and be frank? It's our rightful duty to shape your policies and for you to accept them. Instead of which, you constantly take the advice of your secretary, Rizzio. Oh, I begin to see. You want me to get rid of David? Aye, send him back where he belongs. Well, I shan't. You'd better think twice about that. Are you giving me orders? No, no. Ruthven only meant to say... I know what Ruthven means to say. He means to say that I'm a fool. Though he never dares put it quite that boldly. Well, I have been a fool. I lost Bothwell, who held you all in check. I thought I was ruling Scotland, but it was only his strength behind me. But I still have David. You can't take Scotland for yourselves so long as he is by my side. I shall never let him go. He may be sorry if you don't. Someday, Ruffin, you may be sorry for that tongue. In spite of my mistakes, I've won my people to me. You all know it and fear it. Sit down, my lord, sit down. It's only your king. holding counsel, eh, Moray? Always talking, talking. You're late. Oh, I don't take orders anymore. I'm king now. Even if someone doesn't seem to know it. You never can count on a woman. Marry one and she turns to ice. Ugh. They're all alike, even the queen. Can't stand the sight of you. Say you're drunk when you need a kiss or two. Would you believe it, Moray? They lock doors at night. And all the while they're thinking of someone else. Some fellow who's gone to France, perhaps.
Will your majesty sign these papers now? Where's my wife? Alone with her ladies, sire. But you have access to her, eh, Rizzio? Will you sign these papers now, your majesty? Later! Later! Now you know. If I if, thought... If, if, Open your eyes, man. Who else is with her all the time? Day and night alone. Redeem her favor. Be king in fact as well as name. Sure you don't lack courage. Who said I lack courage? How dare you address me? What is that song, David? It's a song I... I made up. Oh, he's always making up some nonsense about love. Aren't you in love, Beaton? Just a soldier. Not a penny to his name. Why don't you marry him? And live on air? On anything. What do you see in the fire, David? The sunshine of Italy? You want to go home, don't you? You're my only friend, and they're driving you away. I want you to go, David, for your own sake. Though I don't know what we'll do without you. Good evening. Why don't you recall the Earl of Bothwell? Let's have no more talk of Bothwell. <laughs> Sunny Italy fair, where do you laugh and sing your lips up? You look surprised, my dear. I wish to be alone. Alone? Ask your husband. Do you know? Madonna! Let me go! Get out! Get out, all of you! We intend no harm to anyone here except that traitor. Traitor! My only friend! I too good a friend. Your husband knows about that. I know who the traitors in Scotland are. Get out of my room! If you lay one hand on Rizzio, I'll see you all destroyed. Quiet! When 
when Scotland finds out we've killed a rogue in your own bedroom. Hey! Uh, if David's done anything wrong, I'll deliver him up for fair trial, but not to assassins. Madonna! <laughs> Justice! Justice! Not only murdered poor David, you ruined me, ruined yourself, thrown a doubt on the child I'm going to have, your child. I only wanted my rights. God forgive you, I shan't, and I'll forgive myself for marrying you. Am I to follow David? There's no fear if you do as we say. Do you hear that? So long as I'm their prisoner and my husband backs them up. I'm an unfaithful wife and the people, my only strength, will turn against me. Enough. Before we go further, you'll sign this. A full pardon for all of us. Never. Sign it. Bless them. She's better off dead if she doesn't sign it. Aye, we're better off. If she got away without signing it, we'd be done for. This proves her guilt. Aye, sign it. <laughs> Sign it. Brother, what was returned to Edinburgh? He's marching here. How many men has he got? Only a handful. Let him come there. He'll raise the country against us. He won't have a chance. Open the gates. Let him come in. Aye, we'll post ourselves in the courtyard. We'll deal a surprise. Aye. Aye. No, wait. I'll sign your pardon. Aye, you'll sign it well enough with Bothwell in danger. Darnley! You'll stay here. God. Don't you see what you've done? They'll kill Boswell as they killed poor David. They're only their shield. How long will they tolerate you when I'm out of the way? Why did you do it? I wanted to win you back. Oh, you're blind. They had to have you in their scheme to prove their lie that I dishonored you. But once they drag me down before the people, what use will they have for you then? How long will you keep your crown? You'll find yourself a prisoner as I am now. You'll only be king as long as I'm queen. You still have a chance to save yourself, to save us both. How? Help me escape before they kill Bothwell. I can't. They'd kill me. Not if you're with me. They'd run for their lives. They'd leave Scotland and you'd be safe. With you, Mary? Yes, with me. You'd forgive me? You wouldn't leave me? I swear I'll never leave you. Her Majesty has retired to her bedroom. Stand guard there. Oh, Lord.
Where's the queen? In her bedroom, my lord. Where's Dornley? With the queen, my lord. <laughs> Will Huntley and his clan join them? Huntley? Aye, they'll have 10,000 at their backs before morning. Aye, and they'll be after us. I'm getting out of Scotland. I am with you. Or we're done for nothing. Aye. He's tricked. Never mind her. But if ever I lay my hands on Donnelly, except for a man for himself, get over the border while we're staying. <laughs> Mary Stewart has a son. And I am only a barren stock. Where's Murray? Banished with the other lords who murdered David Rizzio. I failed. going to grow up into a great big man and take care of me when I'm an old woman. She's not much older now than the wee man himself. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Happy birthday! Your Majesty, here is a present for him. Hutman, what would he do with the Claymore? I wait till he grows up. He'll need it. It was your father's, ma'am. My father's. I brought it from Inverness. Aye. Thank you. He's a steward. Aye. I hope you won't need it, Jamie. His Majesty. 
the king. What a charming family scene. <laughs> we were just admiring your son. Oh, where are you, Bothwell? Yes, he's a year old today. Of course, that's why you came back from Glasgow. <laughs> I'll put him to bed. Afraid my presence will contaminate him? You know that's not true. Why have you come back? Has Ruthven returned to Scotland? He wouldn't dare. I'd only like to find him if he has. You'd like to have me out of the way, too. You'd have them all back if you had your way. You know what they do to me. You're not yourself, you're worried. I tell you, Ruffin's in Scotland. No. Morton, too, secretly. No, they aren't. Oh, don't tell me. You know all about it. And you, too, Bartwell. Henry, you're overwrought. You need sleep. Sleep? Not here. What do you mean? I'll not tell you. You won't trick me again. I'm going to leave Scotland. You can't. You'll forget who you are. What do I care for an empty title? It's my life. My life, I tell you. They were my friends. Murray and Ruffin. You tricked me. Turn them against me. You've never forgiven, never forgotten about Rizzio. I kept my word. You've never loved me. I love your son. Think of him. You can't desert your own son. I'll disown him. I'll deny him his father. Your Majesty. Try and make him King of Scotland and England then. He doesn't mean it. He can't. I've... I've kept my word with him. I've endured every... insult and every humiliation. I've done everything but... love him. I've tried, but I... I can't. I can't. Harry. All I ask is to serve you. Be at your side. Talk to me about Inverness. Talk to me about something. I've had to hear somebody talk. Scotland cries out from his grave for revenge against 
against his murderer. And is the assassin's name not known? Those who were banished have told me his name. I, who was it that coveted the hand of the queen? Bothwell's his name. Bothwell. Hear, all oh, ye people, the prayer of that infant prince, the child of him who was slain. Judge and avenge my cause. Oh, Lord. Your Majesty. as you call it. That's my worry. No, no. It is hers. If you cannot pull the wool over my eyes, how do you expect to fool all of Scotland? I'll take care of myself, Huntley. And of Mary. Scotland can point no finger at her if I marry her this way, against her will. Marry her? Why? Why not? You're mad. You're both mad. I'd rather be dead lassie than see this night ever come. You're the Queen of Scotland, and you let the woman in your blind your senses. Why, he's not even of our faith. You've always stood by that until now. If you go on with this make-believe, there's naught but disaster ahead of you. She has nothing to do with it, I tell you. If you feel that way, Huntley, draw your sword against me. I'll not draw mine against any friend. You'll have no friend. Take this, and turn it on yourself if what you speak is true. There's honor in that escape. You may go if you wish, Huntley. Go back to Edinburgh. Join Maury and the rest. Stir up the clans against No, no, they'll do that themselves. You'll put yourselves in Maury's power again. Three of the clock, and all's well. <laughs> Are you afraid, my Mary? I'll send you back with Huntley. Why? From the very beginning, I've always belonged to you. I knew it. How vast the night is. How bright and wonderful. I've never seen it like this. Nor I. I look there. Make a wish. I have. They say there's a star for each of us. I used to imagine that when I was born, God put a dark star in the sky. A star nobody could ever see, not even me. And then one night I'd see a flash of light. And I'd see my star, but it would be falling, and I'd be gone. Uh, 
dark or bright, I'll always follow your star, Mary. It was dark because I, I didn't really exist at all. I was a dream, and I was the one who was dreaming it, too. That's absurd, isn't it? Perhaps I didn't really exist until I met you. All right. There was a memory of being a child in a country like this. And then they told me that my father was dead. And I cried. And they told me that I was queen of Scotland. It didn't mean as much to me as my dolls. And then I was very important. Not to myself, but to grown-up people. And then, then one day I caught a glimpse of my star. And they took me away at night on a ship. It was all so strange that the sea vast like this. The world seemed enormous. And then we came to another land and they told me it was France. Everything different, people singing, laughing. <laughs> they were all happier. I learned to love it all. After a while I began to think that I'd I'd only dream Scotland, but I'd go on forever playing in the garden, learning French, studying, hearing music, talking to four wise old men who were my uncles. Um, one of them was the Cardinal of Lorraine. I, I liked him best. He, he was always telling me that I would, I would marry the son of the King of France when I grew up. That seemed silly. He was just a boy. We used to fight, and then I'd chase him, and he'd run away. Right. I was in France when you married him. I've never forgotten all the pomp and ceremony, and the great crowd before the cathedral, and the pages carrying your long train. You weren't even old enough to be out of short dresses. I was 16. It was just an arrangement. And then... One day, his father was killed in the tournament. And everyone made a great fuss over me. And I was queen of France. But before I could realize it all, he died too, poor boy. And then I was queen no longer. And then I came back to my old dream, to Scotland. I was never in love. You know that. Ego coniongo vars in matrimonium, in nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. She summons all Scotland to take up arms for her. Will they come? Only a rabble of must troopers from the border, where Bothwell's strength lies. <laughs> Mercenaries, they won't stand up and fight. Where's the child? Abducted by Moray. They'll not harm her son. Moray's strength depends on making him king and ruling as regent till he comes of age. The Lords have won most of Scotland to their cause by convincing John Knox that Bothwell and the Queen murdered Darnley to get him out of their way. Knox thunders it into the people. And after all, what greater proof of their guilty love than this reckless marriage? <laughs> and I believed I'd failed. We shall soon know, Your Majesty. The Lords are marching on Edinburgh. And they outnumber Bothwell's defenders five to one. Oh, my people! 
Into what pit of abomination have ye fallen? Tis not the true banner of Scotland that ye follow, but the blood-red banner of murder and treason. Remember, a king of Scotland cries out from his grave to be avenged. Go oh, and will yeah. you? And will you defend the guilty queen? Open the gates for the host of the righteous. Open the gates. Are you afraid, Mary? Yes. Tell, tell. Oh, that's not my Mary. I'm only afraid for you. Then you're not afraid at all. Bowing comes with a bad grace from traitors. We are not in arms against you, my sister. Only him. Before you state your conditions, Murray, I'll state mine. We'll decide the issue by single combat between you and me. Or anyone else you and the other traitors wish to appoint. No, they'll find some way to trick you. Here are Murray's conditions. I beg you, madame. I beg you, sir. You owe it to the queen. Go ahead. What are they? First, that you leave Scotland forever. No. What else? That the Queen bind herself to act only with our consent. No more? No more. Then here are my conditions. You've wanted my earl. Well, you may have it. I'll leave Scotland. If you'll pledge your word that the Queen's to keep her throne and reign here as before. But if you break your word, or encroach one inch on her sovereignty, you guard your gates, for I'll be back. I'll see if your terms are acceptable to my lords. Let me live or die at your side. I'm your wife. I love you. I love you, my Mary. What do I lose? Nothing. You save your throne. What's my throne? I'd put a torch to it for any one of the days I've had with you. They've been so few. Ah, but wonderful days, Mary. Twenty wonderful days. Better than a lifetime. Take me with you. No, no. You're Queen of Scotland. That's your destiny. And I'll love you till the day I die. That's mine. of Scotland accept your terms. Very well. I wouldn't trust Ruthven's pledge or Morton's. But after all corrupt as you are, you're a steward, the son of a king. I'll take your word as a steward. But remember, Morley, if you break your pledge, if you ever raise your hand against her, I'll be back.
your milk white face. Pluck down the murderers. Pluck down this contaminator of men. If there's to be a council here, send out this raving maniac. Though you be a queen and have faith in thy gods and idols, yet in this night of reckoning, they shall not avail thee. Murray, I demand his removal. Why don't you answer me? You shall have to leave your palace. That's but my choice, not yours. Not now. I'm still your queen. You gave your word that I should rule as before. That's impossible now. Now, I see your treachery. You not only betray your sovereign, you betray yourself, your own pledge. We defend Scotland! Aye. 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 You may remain here if you'll sign what we dictate. And what do you dictate? Your abdication. And you consent to have your son crowned king and appoint me regent till he comes of age. I refuse. We'll change your mind. Remember Bothwell's warning. He'll come back. We, his army disbanded. At the price of a thousand crowns on his right. head. So long as I live, no power on earth shall take my throne away from me. Come, lock me up. I'll bide my time and wait for Bothwell. My Lord Throckmorton, ambassador to Scotland. What news from Scotland? Bothwell has been defeated. Was he taken? No, Your Majesty. He escaped to Denmark, where he hopes to raise arms and money for a final blow against Moray. But I have more important news for you. The son of Mary Stuart has been crowned king, and Moray rules again as regent. Then she's abdicated. So Moray claims. She's still imprisoned. At Loch Leven. I've seen her. She asks for your majesty's support of her cause against the rebels. And asks that you remember that if you favor rebellion in Scotland, you may eventually see it in England. Rebellion. How I hate that word. Remember, your majesty, your security depends upon her being behind bars. Can I support rebellion so near to my own throne? Remember that. Neither can I afford to take sides so long as Bothwell lives. If Moray's plans succeed, he will be caged in Denmark for good on some pretext or other. Return to Scotland. Tell Moray that in the eyes of the world he is a rebel. A traitor. Therefore, I shall oppose him publicly. Your Majesty. Yet support him privately. And Mary Stuart? Give her this ring as a token of my friendship and support. But she will ask. I know what she'll ask. And we'll put her off. Procrastinate. Months. Years. There's security in that.
running off the seat. Go and sit down, ma'am. It's poor little for fine folk, but it's all we've got, and you're welcome to it. I have a little boy like you. Does he sit in the high chair too? <laughs> he wants to know if he sits in the high chair too. Oh, yes. In a very high chair. Well, for what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Majesty. You come from Elizabeth? Yes, Your Majesty. I've come to conduct you to a place of security. I thank Her Majesty. I stand in need of her friendship now. Thank you, my kind friend. This lady in your custody, sir. Custody? What do you mean? England has no jurisdiction over me. I asked Elizabeth for refuge. She promised it. Am I a prisoner? I demand an answer. What's 
wrong with him? It's kind of hard to know. I... He spoke true. He's free. Her Majesty is present, symbolically. <laughs> the accused will be seated. I prefer to stand, symbolically. Do you acknowledge the jurisdiction of this court? Not of this court, nor of Elizabeth. There are no examples of sovereigns condemned by courts of law. In Rome, the Tetrarch Cajetanus was put to death by trial. There is another precedent. Licinius, brother-in-law of the Emperor Constantine. Not to forget Joanna of Naples. You go back 1,500 years? Go back to Pontius Pilate, who condemned to the cross a sovereign greater than the world has ever known. And remind Elizabeth what happened to the memory of Pontius Pilate. Please remember that you are the accused. Accused? Of what? Of attempting to take the life of our sovereign lady, the Queen of England. I have lain in prison ever since I came to this land. Even had I wished it, how could I make such an attempt? By conspiring with certain English subjects of your religious persuasion, to wit, Antony Babington. A true friend who sought only to release me from unjust imprisonment. Where is he? Executed for treason. And his friends? Executed for treason. Poor, generous friends. So the first step to prove me guilty is to murder those who would prove me innocent. The accused will confine herself to answering questions, not framing them. I am the accuser here, not the accused. I accuse Elizabeth of treachery and plotting against my life, not I against hers. Do you deny secretly communicating with the aforesaid Anthony Babington? Do any of you deny that you would try to escape from unjust imprisonment? Do you know what it means to be shut up from everything you love? From your husband, your Son, your own people, confined like an animal, until each day grows so long that it 
seems a lifetime? Yes, I smuggled out letters. Isn't it true that you approved the plot against the life of our queen? As true as to say that you are honest men. Isn't this letter in your own handwriting? The way you shout, my lord, tells me even at this distance that it is a forgery. Will you confine yourself to answering questions? I have heard no questions. Only accusations phrased like questions. But why prolong this mockery? Elizabeth, fearing there might be a real plot to take her life and put me on her throne, has invented a false plot so that I may be condemned to death. But still she fears to spring her trap because of Bothwell. She knows he wins support for my cause abroad. And when he returns this time, he'll carry the field in Scotland, and I'll be queen again. While he lives, I'll live. Bring in the other prisoner. Don't know. I tried my best to reach you, ma'am, but I couldn't get past your jailer, and I was taken. Don't know. Where is he? Where's Bothwell? No. No. Oh. He spoke of you at the last, ma'am. He said, he said he'd be waiting for you with the bagpipes playing. Oh. And all the time. You knew. Now I see. Now I understand. Condemn me. Kill me. I don't care. Comfort me in this, the hour of my agony. With me, thy will be done.
Elizabeth. I've only seen a poor likeness. But yes, you are Elizabeth at last. I, a Stuart. I see now why men love you. Even now, standing where I am my last night in this world, I wouldn't change places with Elizabeth. I might have known to come to gloat like this, stealthily, under cover of night, as you've done everything to destroy me. And you've done nothing to destroy me? When was I your enemy? Always. Always your life was a threat to mine. How? Why? You were born too close to my throne. It was you or I. A knife planted between my shoulders. And my kingdom was yours. I never wished it. But you'd have taken it if it came. Ah, yes. You're not even a woman. I'm a queen. You've been a woman. See where it's brought you. It has brought me happiness you'll never know, Elizabeth. I wouldn't give up the memory of one day with Bothwell for a century of your life. What do you know of my life? You were born a queen. Honors, thrones, everything fell into your lap. What do you know of the struggle for power? I started with nothing, robbed even of a name, not acknowledged by my father. My own mother, yes, Anne Boleyn, was executed. And I learned how a woman may be a queen one day and stand on the scaffold the next. I was sent to the tower by my own sister. Oh, I know what prisons are being threatened month after month with execution. I died a thousand times. But I fought my way upward, inch by inch, until I wore the crown. I gave my love to no man, but to my kingdom, to England. And you pray to me of love. What do you know of my life? I know it's been a failure, a magnificent failure. It's you who failed, not I. You threw away a kingdom for love, for Bothwell. Aye, and I do it again a thousand times. You were always afraid of me. You're afraid of me still. You know my blood will stain you. You'll never wash it off. And the pity of it is, Elizabeth, that you and I, we might have been friends. Do you think I want your death? Mary Stuart, save yourself. How? Oh. Renounce your Stuart claim to my throne. Sign your name to it. Still driven by fear. Fear of me even dead. So that's why you came here tonight. Renounce your claim and live. You've always loved power, cherished it fiercely. I've loved as a woman loves, lost as a woman loses. But still I win. You have no heir. My son will inherit your throne. My son will rule England. Still, still I win.
Majesty. It is time. Your Majesty. It is time. Thine arms were spread upon the cross. So receive me into the arms of mercy. And forgive me my sins. Thank you. 